Omnicom OCO is a comprehensive solution from Omnicom that provides video monitoring of vehicles and other stationary assets. The main purpose of this integrated video monitoring solution is to increase vehicle fleet efficiency and to supply data for an incident investigation if necessary. These may include different kinds of road traffic accidents as well as various interactions between the vehicle fleet and transport infrastructure. Video recordings captured by the system can be used as evidence in proceedings with the authorities. Omnicom's integrated solution includes the Omnicom OCO onboard terminal, Omnicom cameras, and Omnicom online user software. First, I will show you the design of the products and the set we supply. As promised, we will focus on all the components included in the set and the terminal itself. This is the onboard terminal, which has two panels. On the front panel, there are connectors for the power supply and auxiliary equipment, as well as slots for SIM and SD cards. There are also SMA connectors for GSM and 3G GPS antennas, a LAN Ethernet connector required for configuration, and a USB service port. Here we also have lights that indicate active components. On the rear panel, there are waterproof POA standard connectors for the camera's API, and a connector for the monitor. The set includes a seal that can be installed on the front panel of the terminal. secured with screws, and fixed with the sticker supplied. It will block access to SIM cards and SD slots, and will protect them from unauthorized removal. The set includes wires for connecting power supply and auxiliary equipment operating via digital and CAN interfaces and a set of assembly parts with everything you need to install the terminal on board, including adapters, fuses, and fuse holders. There are all the necessary GSM and 3G GPS antennas that connect to the terminal, as well as a set of adapters, a service USB cable, an adapter for connecting the monitor, and an Ethernet adapter, which is required during the configuration. We also include a patch cord for connecting to your laptop and to the Ethernet connector on the terminal, as well as the manual that contains the product specifications and explains the purpose of all the wire colors. Let's look in detail at the components. Here we have a night vision camera with infrared illumination which can be attached using either double-sided tape or screws. If you take off the cover, you will see a place where you can fix the screws. At the other end, there is a camera connector, which provides protection from dust and moisture when you connect the patch cord to the camera. On one side, it has an adapter to install the terminal and a connector that provides a secure, non-detachable coupling. There are also two RJ45 connectors that you will need to crimp the patch cord. Eventually, we have a crimped camera cord that can be plugged into the video terminal connectors. The connection is sealed and tight, resistant to dust and moisture. It's ready to be used. To configure the cameras, you will need to supply power to the terminals. Plug in the Ethernet connector from the set of adapters, connect the patch cord to your laptop, and connect the camera from the package to any socket on the terminal. Next, you will need to launch the network connection configuration on your laptop. To do this, open Network Connection Properties. 
select the API settings of the protocol version and set the following API address and subnet mask. After this, you can use Internet Explorer to connect via API 192, 168, 12, 241 to the camera's web interface. Enter the video login and password, admin, admin, to access camera settings. In the Settings Network tab, indicate one of the four API addresses between 241 and 244, depending on which channel you want to assign the camera to. When you have set the values, press the Setup button. The camera will restart and apply the new parameters. Another way to configure the API address for the camera is to use the Device Manager program, which is available for free online. In this situation, connect the laptop to the network the same way. Then launch the program and click on API Search. It will show a list of camera APIs that are currently available. In this case, we have only one camera with a 241 API address. So in this field, you can assign one of four API addresses and click the Modify button. After that, the camera will reboot and apply the settings. This procedure should be followed for all the cameras you want to connect to your terminal, which must be assigned different API addresses. The cameras must be connected to the terminal one by one. To continue the configuration, connect the terminal to your laptop via USB and set it up with Omnicom Configurator. In the Configurator, go to the Terminal section and select Video in the Settings tab. There, we can choose what channel names we want to display in the video. For example, we can call them Channel 1, Channel 2, Channel 3, and Channel 4. Record the settings to the device and then check how it is going to be displayed in the video. To complete the setup, connect the monitor to the terminal, set the direction of the cameras, and make sure that everything is in its place, that all contacts are in their corresponding positions, and that the video is being recorded. Once all the equipment has been set up, we can proceed to configuration in Omnicom Online. After setting up the terminal and cameras via Omnicom Configurator and using network tools to export the vehicle profile to Omnicom Online, we'll proceed with vehicle profile configuration. I will also show you how to work with the reports. First, let's have a look at how to configure a vehicle profile. For this, you need to select the required terminal ID, click the Vehicle Profile button, and in the Video section, the following settings are available channel names to be displayed by the software, the archive usage mode where you can prohibit or loop recording, the video file duration before and after the event time. Tick this box to activate Omnicom Video Service and select the tariff plan with storage of up to one or up to five gigabytes of video on Omnicom servers. The next step we are interested in is setting the rules for downloading videos in this section, you can either choose from the existing rules or add a new one. When adding a new rule, you need to specify its name, select the type of vehicle for which it is available, and choose the type of event that will trigger this rule. To select the event type, make an appropriate choice in the main section. The available subsection and then indicate the specific type of event. For each type of event, 
you need to select one or more channels for the video to be downloaded and adjust its duration. It can be taken from the vehicle's previously configured profile, or you can set up your own video duration for each event, as well as the video waiting time, which can be either limited or unlimited, based on the 3G coverage in the area where your vehicle is used. Now that you are finished adjusting the rules for downloading videos, let's have a look at how to generate reports. We are mainly interested in the multimedia report, with all the video clips that have been generated automatically or downloaded manually. In this tab, you can see the available video clips, as well as the current status of the task in progress and the initiator of each event. Here, you can also initiate manual video downloading. To do this, click on Order Video and select the necessary vehicle, camera, date, time, and duration of the video by scrolling. After setting the maximum waiting time, click OK and the video will start downloading. The last report is an events report. This report reflects all of the types of events that happen to a vehicle during a selected period of time. As you can see, there is an icon next to each event name. If the video for this type of event is not set to be downloaded automatically, the icon will be faint. If the video for this event is to be automatically downloaded, you will see an active icon, and when you click on it, you'll find the corresponding video available for watching. If you tick the inactive icon, you will see a button that says order video for this event. After requesting the video, you can check the event status in the multimedia report or simply wait for the icon to become active in the current report. If you have questions about the functions or operation of the device, you can contact our sales department. And for any issues regarding the equipment while in use, please contact our technical support service.